Hey there everybody, it's time for start four in the Terry Felton, win one for Terry Felton replay. Start four out of six. First one he's going to have at home at the Homer Dome, the Metrodome, in Minnesota. See the ballpark effects. Singles, 1-19 to 19 for lefties, 1-11 to 11 for righties. Home runs, 1-14, to 14, no matter if you're left or right. This game was played May 29, 1982. These are the actual lineups. Leading off for the Yankees will be second baseman Willie Randolph. Ken Griffey will play center field and hit second. Oscar Gamble's the third place hitter. He's in right field. Batting cleanup is first baseman John Mayberry. Batting fifth, the DH is Bobby Mercer. Hitting sixth at third base is Greg Nettles. Hitting seventh, the former twin, playing shortstop Roy Smalley. Hitting eighth and playing left field is the speedster Dave Collins. And batting ninth, another former twin, in fact he just got recently traded to the Yankees, is Butch Weiniger doing the catching. And for the Yankees on the hill will be lefty Tommy John. For the Twins, leading off will be Gary Ward in right field. Hitting second, former Ranger manager Ron Washington. He'll be at second base, batting second. Hitting third, recently added to the team, Tom Bronanski in center field. Batting cleanup at first base is Kent Herbeck. Hitting fifth, another recent addition is righty swinging Dave Engel. He's the DH. Mickey Hatcher is in left field. He will hit sixth. Gary Gaetti is at third base. He will hit seventh. Sal Butera is the catcher. He will hit eighth. And Lenny Fiedo, shortstop, will bat ninth. And, of course, Terry Felton on the mound. So, we'll go ahead and get things rolling here, literally and figuratively. Put Terry Felton in the hot seat. And he's going to be facing Willie Randolph to start us off. Let's get this up here where you can see everybody, hopefully. All right. Over here we can see the score sheet as well, hopefully. All right, so we are ready to go. Hopefully this is a good setup for you to see everything. And again, was going to do this in payoff pitch, but decided to do it in uh, Stratomatic. Super advanced. And here we go, Willie Randolph facing Terry Felton. We get a 4-8. So Felton against a right-hander, 4-8. A 1-3 is a single. Anything else, and he will line it to third. That's a 13, so it's a line out to the third baseman, Gary Gaetti. And Randolph is retired, one away. Brings up the center fielder, Ken Griffey. And Dave Winfield was injured during this time of the season, so he is not on the roster. In case you're wondering why he's not playing. 5-10 against the lefty for Felton. 5-10 is a catcher X. Catcher Butera is a 4, E4. 16 and a 13, so I think on the 16 you'll be okay. Check the error rating. 4 and a 16 is a P slash F, but nobody's on base, so it's going to be a pop out, assuming there's no error. 13 and he's an E4. E4, there is no 13, so Butera on that P slash F, it's simply going to be a pop up. Actually, a foul out, I'll call it in foul territory, so out number two. So two up, two down. Good start so far for Felton. Here's Oscar Gamble, the man with the big afro. One, two for uh, Gamble. That's a single and a one to 13. 14 to 20, he'll line it to second. That's an 18, he's gonna line it right to Ron Washington. And the Yankees go down in order. One, two, three here in the bottom, uh, top of the first. We go to the bottom of the first, it is the Yankees nothing and the Twins coming to bat. And for the Yankees on the hill will be lefty veteran Tommy John. Here's Gary Ward. Ward to lead things off. The Twins loaded their lineup. They're all right-handed batters except for Herbeck. He's the only lefty. So Ward, a 5-5 for Tommy John against a right-hander. Ground ball to short. That's going to be handled by... Smalley, one away, brings up Ron Washington. That's a 210 against a lefty for Washington. That's a one to four double. Five to 20 will be a single. And that is a six, so it is a single for Ron Washington. That'll bring up Bernanski, and now the D20 will 
find its first time into the game on a pregame roll, and that's a two. So, chance for either a balk or a uh, pass ball. We're checking the pass ball rating since that white die is a five. Pass ball rating on Weiniger is a one, so we have to roll a one to get a pass ball out of this. 17 so there is no pass ball we drive on Bernanski 311 against the lefty ground ball shortstop a that is a 643 Taylor made and pardon the pun but a twin killing so the inning is over nothing for either team in the first we go to the second no score and Terry Felton back on the bump Facing John Mayberry RFD. Where's Aunt B? It's a 5 11 against the lefty for Felton. And that's an in home run chance at a ballpark. Mayberry does have in home run power. He is a lefty. Home runs are 1 to 14 for righties or lefties. So 1 to 14, Mayberry will go deep. It's a 19, so it's just going to be a deep fly to right. And handled out there by. Gary Ward right in front of that big baggie, that big trash bag looking thing they had at the Metrodome in right field. Here is Bobby Mercer, the DH. It's a 110 and that's going to be a ground ball to the first baseman Herbeck. He'll take it to the bag himself. Two up, two down. Brings up Greg Nettles. Nettles, third baseman, stepping to the plate. Oh, there, down goes Felton. Let's see if we can't get these guys to act right. Here we go. 3-3 three, three for Nettles is a foul out to the catcher, Laudner. I'm sorry, Putera. Laudner's on the bench. So that's going to end the inning. Three up, three down once again. Go the Yankees. So Felton, perfect through two innings. And it's no score still. And Tommy John back on the bump, where he will be facing Kent Herbeck, lefty on lefty. That's a 1-8 for Herbeck against the lefty, and that's a single. So Herbeck, didn't matter to him about lefties, he gets the single anyway. And here's Dave Engel, the DH. He uh, did really well against lefties, not so much against righties. Nothing on the 20. 211, so against the lefty, 211 is a foul out to Nettles at third. One away for Mickey Hatcher, a fielder. Nothing on the 20. It's a 6 5, and that's going to be a ground ball shortstop A. Another double play, it's another twin killing. 6 4 3. And the inning is over. So two innings and two twin killings. Tommy John has got the ground ball working. So we go to the third, no score. Felton will be facing his former teammate, Roy Smalley. 1-8. One 1-8 eight. One eight against a right-hander is a strikeout. So Felton records his first strikeout of the game. Here's Dave Collins. Good idea to keep him off the bases. 1-10 is a ground ball back to Felton. That's an easy play. Two up, two down, and now the guy who caught Felton, Butch Weiniger, steps up. And the old saying goes, a catcher should be able to hit a pitcher that he's previously caught. Let's see if that's the case. 4-8. Four, 4-8 eight. Four, eight is a line out to first. So it's snagged by Herbeck. Innings over. And Felton has perfect through three innings. He's retired all nine he has faced as he desperately seeks a win. So we go to the bottom of the third. Still nothing doing for either club. Gary Gaetti steps to the plate. That is a 2-2 for Gaetti against the lefty. And he's going to be hit by the pitch. It says plus injury, but I'm not doing injury. So it's simply going to be a hit, a plump hit batter. So now we go to Butera. Nothing on the 20. 6 11 against a right hander is a ballpark single check. And for right handers, that's a 1 through 11. 1 to 11 will be a base hit. And that's an 18, so we're going to line it to short. So one away. 
Brings up Lenny Fiedo, number nine hitter. Nothing on the 20. 2-7. Two 2-7 seven. Two seven is another ground ball A. It's another double play. 2-7 is a ground ball, second base A plus, but the infield wasn't in. It was a double play depth. So it's a 4-6-3 twin killing again. Three innings, three double plays. And that has allowed Tommy John to face the minimum as well. So three complete here at the Homer Dome, but nothing going on offensively here. It's all about the pitching and the defense. We're scoreless. We start the fourth. Top of the order and Willie Randolph. He lined to Gaetti his first trip. 6-8. Six, 6-8 eight. Six, eight is a strikeout. 6-9 would have been an in-home run chance, but a 6-8 is a strikeout. So one away for Ken Griffey Sr. His first trip. He fouled out to Butera behind the plate. 110. And he's going to do it again. 110 is another foul out to the catcher. So that's two down for Oscar Gamble. Lined to Ron Washington at second, his first trip. 2 8. 2 8 for Gamble is going to be a walk, and that's the first base runner for the Yankees. Two out walk to Gamble. He's not a threat to steal, so he's going to stay right where he is. Here's Mayberry. Nothing on the 20. Mayberry fly to right field his first trip. 2 8. 2 8 is a pop up to second, handled by Washington. And the inning is over. So nothing doing for the Yankees. They did get a walk, but nothing else. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Still no score. And Tommy John coming back out to face the top of the order, Gary Ward. Ward his first time to face Tommy John. He grounded to short. It's a six-eight, and this time he's got a he's going to connect here. Six-eight, one to nine's a triple, and. 10 to 20 is a single. That is a one, so that is a triple for Gary Ward. Lead off triple. So now the Twins have something cooking. Here's Ron Washington. They're going to play the infield back this early. They're not going to, they don't want the big inning. Oops, let's redo that because that kind of rolled sideways here. Nothing on the 20. Here's Ron Washington. 3 8 against a lefty. And that's a single with two stars, so it didn't matter about the infield. Solid single either way. And the Twins grab a 1-0 lead here in the fourth. Thanks to the triple by Ward and the single by Washington. Washington not really a threat to steal. So he's going to stay put. Nothing on the 20 for Bernanski. It's a 1-6. And a 1-6 against a lefty. Double check something here. Make sure I didn't read uh, Washington off of a right. No, it was off the lefty. Okay, I did do it right. Bernanski, 1 6 against the lefty, is a 1 to 14 double. And a 15 to 20 is going to fly to left. So it's a 17. He will fly to left. And Bernanski just missed one. Here's Herbeck. Singled his first trip. Nothing on the 20. It's a 5 6 against a lefty. That's a fly to center, and that's two away. Brings up the DH, Dave Engel. Nothing on the 20. It is a 4-6 against a right-hander, and that's another fly to center. And that will end the inning, but the Twins do break through with the run thanks to the triple by Ward, the single by Washington. The end of four, it's the Twins one and the Yankees nothing. So, is this the night that Terry Felton gets his win? Well, we've got five innings remaining, so it's a lot of baseball to be played. Here's Bobby Mercer. Mercer grounded to Herbeck his first trip. 1-9, and he's going to ground to Herbeck again. Out, one away. Brings up Greg Nettles. That's a 5-9 against a lefty, and that's an in-home run possibility. It's 1-8. He does have normal power. So 1-8 is a homer. 9-20 will be a double. Either way, it's going to be the first hit for the Yankees. It's a 2, so it's a home run, a game-tying home run. So break up the no-hitter, break up the shutout all at one time as Nettles goes yard, and we are tied at one apiece. I'll bring up Roy Smalley. 3-3. Three, three. 
He has a ground ball to second, and that's two away. For Dave Collins. 4-10. Switch hitter batting left. 4-10 is a strikeout. That's going to end the inning, but the Yankees do tie it on the Nettles homer. Go to the bottom of the fifth, tied at one. And Mickey Hatcher will be leading things off for the Twins against Tommy John. Start the bottom of the fifth. Hatcher, his first trip, grounded into a double play. 3-3 three, three against the lefty is a 1-3 single. 4-20, he will line to short. It's a 3, so he beat, he just snuck it by. Snuck it by Smalley. Couldn't get it. Lead off single for Hatcher. I don't believe he runs very well. No, he had no stolen bases. was caught twice, so that's not a realm of possibilities. So Gary Gaetti is up. Nothing on the 20. 1-7. One, 1-7 seven. One, is a ground ball first base C. So that will advance the runner at least, and it won't be a double play again. Acts just like a sacrifice. Puts Hatcher at second with one out for Sal Butera. I might go ahead and just roll the 20 with the regular dice just to speed things up a little bit. Nothing on the 20. It's a 2-3 against a lefty, and that is a strikeout. So two down for Lenny Fayeto. Nothing on the 20. It's a 4-7 against a right-hander. It's a 1-5 single. 6-20, he will ground to second. And that's a 15, so it's a ground out to Randolph to end the inning. So five innings are complete in the books here at the Metrodome, and nothing's been decided yet. It is one to one. Now Terry Felton, his fifth inning was his point of weakness inning, so he's given up a home run, which is that one hit, so he can still give up three other things this inning before reaching his point of weakness, so he's still got a chance to hang in there if he pitches well. Here's Weiniger. 5-8 is a walk. Well, that's not going to help his cause any. That's a walk. Brings up Willie Randolph. Now, Randolph is a very good bunter. So, I think they're going to have Randolph bunt right here. He is an A bunter. They're going to expect it, so we'll make him a B bunter. And we'll roll and see what happens on the bunt. That's a 2, so that's a possibility of beating that one out. 2 and a B bunter, though, will be a straight sacrifice. And the white die is a six, which means it's a third baseman. So Gaetti fields the bunt. He will throw over to Washington covering first. So it's a sacrifice hit five to four. Weiniger will move to second base. So Randolph gets the job done. One away for Ken Griffey. Griffey's fouled to the catcher Butera twice. 1-8. One 1-8. Eight. One eight. He's going to hit a ground ball to first base A. That's going to move the runner up to third. But now they're two away. So it's going to rely on Oscar Gamble to get something done. Nothing on the 20. That was a 16. 2-6 two for Gamble is a strikeout and that's going to end the inning. So Felton's still okay. Only gives up two things over the course of two innings, so he's still good to go as his team tries to get some runs for him. Go to the bottom of the six, still tied at one. And it'll be for the Twins, the top of the order, and Gary Ward. So Ward tripled and scored his last trip. 310. 310 is a home run check, diamond shot, which is 1 to 14 here at the Metrodome. That's a 17, though, so he's going to fly to left. So he just got up under it a little bit and handled out there by Dave Collins. One away. Here's Ron Washington. That's a 5-8 against a right-hander. Ground ball shortstop B, so that's two away. For Bruninski. And that's a 4-2 against a right-hander. Fly ball to left, handled by Collins again. One, two, three, down go the Twins. We go to the seventh, it's still one to one. And both pitchers doing doing well here at the Homer Dome. All right, so Felton facing Mayberry. 
Mayberry has fly to right and pop to second. Ooh, a 6-12. That could be interesting. 6-12. 1-2 is a single. Anything else, he will line to Herbeck. That's an 18. So he lines to Herbeck. One away. So far, for for the most part, for Felton, the D20 has been kind. Just the home run check for Nettles is the only thing that got him. Here's Mercer, but it's also avoided some home runs and bad things as well. 6-7. Ground ball second base X. One of the few X chances we've had so far. Second baseman Washington's a 4-E21. 15, he, he'll get to it, and there's a 10, so there's never an error on a 10 on those infield checks. So that's a good play. I don't even need to look at the chart. But the base is empty. Doesn't matter. It's a simple 4-3. Ground out. Here's Nettles. Homer at his last trip. He's got the only Yankee hit. 5-3. Five, 5-3 three. Five, three is a fly ball left field X. That is Hatcher. He's a 4-E4. Four e four. That's a 19, so we know he's going to get to that. And again, it's a 10. And I'll double check it for the outfielders, but I don't believe there's an error check on that either. He is a 4 at the left fielder. There is no 10, so good play there by Hatcher. And that's going to end the inning. 1, 2, 3. So Felton throwing a one-hitter through seven innings. That one hit, of course, being a home run. So we're tied at 1 as we go to the seventh inning stretch. And we're looking at Tommy John coming back out. This is his point of weakness beginning, inning number seven. So we'll see how he does with Kent Herbeck. Herbeck singled and fly to center. 5-2 against the lefty is a fly to center. There is that dot there, but he's not tired yet. So it's a simple fly out to center field handled by Griffey. One away for Engel. 4-9 against a right-hander. That's a solid single for Engel. So that's one notch on the point of weakness. So Engel is aboard. Brings up Mickey Hatcher. Engel definitely not a threat to steal. 4-8 against a right-hander is a ground ball third base B. So it's a fielder's choice. 5-4. to four. As Nettles goes the short way to Randolph for out number two to eliminate Engel. Hatcher's now at first. Two down for Gaetti. He's been hit by a pitch and grounded to first. It's a 2-7 for Gaetti against the lefty. It's another ground ball to second. Would have been another double play, but there was already two outs, and the inning is over. So, seven innings in the books, and nothing's been decided. It's 1-1. One to one. So, go figure. Felton has pitched his butt off, but his team's not getting many runs. So... He's still coming back out there because he has not reached this point of weakness in him yet. So he's pitching a one-hitter. you got to leave him in there. Here's Roy Smalley. 0 for 2 with a strikeout. It's a 4-11 against a switch hitter betting left. 4-11 is a ballpark single check. And that's going to almost certainly be a hit because it's 1-19. to And it is, so it's a leadoff single for Smalley. And that'll bring up Collins. And he's a good bunter as well. He's a B bunter. So they're going to have him bunt as well. He'll become a C bunter because the infield's expecting it. That's a three. That should be a good bunt. Should be a good bunt. A B bunter and a three is a sacrifice. It's a six we know from previous times. That's third baseman Gaetti. So he will field it again a 5-4. Sacrifice hit. So Collins does his job, puts Smalley in scoring position with one out for Butch Weiniger. Weiniger is lined to first and walked. Nothing on the 20. It's a 6 9 against a switch hitter batting left. 6 9. 1 to 2 is a triple. Anything else, he'll fly to right. That's a 19, so it's a fly ball to right field. Uh, they could try to move Smalley up to third. So let's take a look here at the results. I believe, if I remember correctly, you add two going from right field to third base on the throw. So his run rating for Ka for uh, Smalley is 12, so that would make him a 14. The right fielder arm wards a zero. 
So it's a one to 14, he will make it to third. 15 and 19, he has to hold. If it's 20, he's out. It's a 13, so he's gonna make it to third base. Like I said, it may not matter, but went ahead and took the, took the base anyway. So he could score on the air or infield hit or a wild pitch or whatever. Here's Willie Randolph, two outs and a man at third. Nothing on the 20, it's a 3-8. For Randolph and he's gonna walk so now with that walk Felton's very close to his point of weakness they're gonna stick with him against Griffey he can get out of this runs at the corners and two outs nothing on the 20 it's a 5-9 against a lefty and that's bad news that's an in home run chance and he does have in power 1-8 to eight to homer 9-20 to 20 is a double so that still might score some runs 9-20 to 20. but 1-8 to is a three run homer it's an 11, so it is a double. So we know for sure that Smalley's going to score. The question is, does Randolph score? So we'll do some calculations for that. He was being held, and he, his run rating is a 16. He's being held, makes him a 15, but there are two outs, makes him a 17. And that's assumed to go to center, which is Bernanski's a plus one arm, makes him an 18. So 1 to 18, he will make it all the way home. It's a 19, he's out. How do you like that? They've got him out the plate. So Bernanski will call this uh, 8 to 6 to 2 as they retire Randolph at the plate, and it keeps the Yankees to just one run, but it's enough to have them take a 2 to 1 lead. Okay, apologize for the interruptions, but uh, to wrap everything up, that was a, we're going to call it an 8-6-2 uh, play on Randolph at the plate. They got him out, thanks to that 19 on the D-20. Keeps the Yankees to just one run, could have been worse. But now Felton is, uh, might be saddled with a loss. Uh, unless the Twins can score two runs this inning, which is probably not likely. Tommy John. He was, his point of weakness inning was last inning. He gave up one single, so he's still in good shape. Butera is the scheduled batter. He will lead off the bottom of the eighth. He is lined to short and struck out. It's a 5-4 against a right-hander, and that's a ground ball third base X. That could be interesting because Nettles wasn't that good this year in 82. He's a 3-E35, so possible error here. 12, I think... That means he will get to it, but we need to check the error possibilities on Nettles. So let's see here, a 3 and a 12, he will get to it. But an E35 and a 16. So E35 and a 16, and believe it or not, E35, 16, there is no error. There is no 16 there, so no error. Nettles will make the play. One away. Now, Lenny Fiedo is the scheduled batter. But they may pinch hit for him because they need some offense. So they're going to go with Jesus Vega. They're going to pinch hit with Jesus Vega. And then we'll figure out what they're going to do defensively. I believe Ron Washington will move to short. And they'll, then they'll need a new second baseman. Castino will take over at second base. But right now, it is Vega who's going to pinch hit. So Vega, pinch hitting right here. And if he reaches, Castino will run for him. But first things first, here's Vega. It's a 5-8. Five, 5-8. Eight. Five, eight. Ground ball shortstop B, so that's two away. So Vega fails in his pinch hitting duties. But now... new second baseman will be the aforementioned John Castino. So we'll write him in defensively. He's a 3-E-4. And Ron Washington will move to shortstop where he's a 4-E-19. Alright, so two, two down bases empty for Gary Ward. Last chance to see if Felton can get a win is if the Twins do something in this at bat, and they won't. It's a ground ball to short. That's going to end the inning. So 
there will be a game five because Felton was not able to get the win. And he's going to have to come out now. Probably well past his point of weakness. So, pitch the ninth inning for the Twins will be Ron Davis. Check that. Let's see if they got lefties coming up. Yes, they do. So, it's actually going to be left hander Daryl Jackson. Daryl Jackson, the lefty, will be on. And I've already mentioned the defensive changes as well. And the Goose, Goose Gossage, is loosening in the Yankee bullpen, so he's most likely going to pitch the ninth. Although you could make a strong case for Tommy John finishing, but uh, they may go ahead and give it to the Goose. So here is Oscar Gamble. And Felton goes, and it's through the line on him. Eight, in, eight innings pitched, two runs, both earned. Uh, one home run. Hits, he allowed one two, three hits. So, can't ask much more than that. Just didn't get the run support. He walked two, three. He walked three. And he struck out one, two, three, four. Total of four. So there's Felton's line score. Put the camera down here so you can see it a little bit better. 18's pitch, three hits, two runs, all earned. Walked three, struck out four, gave with the home run. And right now, he is scheduled to be the losing pitcher unless the Twins rally. So right now, it's Oscar Gamble stepping to the plate. Let's get the thing in line where you can see it. Lefty against lefty, Daryl Jackson. 5-9 against a left-hander. 5-9 is a ground ball shortstop X. That's Ron Washington. He just moved from second to short. He's a 4 e 19 That's an 8. 4 and an 8. He will get in front of it. That is a 6, and he's an E19. There is no 6, so it is a good play for Ron Washington. One away for John Mayberry, another lefty. That is a 5-7. Five, 5-7 seven. Five, seven against the left hander is a 1-16 single. 17-20 is a line out. That is a base hit for Mayberry. One out single brings up Bobby Mercer. But uh, he's going to get pinch hit for because he mainly hit against righties. His lefty side is not very good. So they're going to go to their bench and bring in Lou Pinella. The right-hander, Lou Pinella. He will take over as the DH in this game and pinch hit for Mercer at the same time. So Pinella, sweet Lou, will pinch hit against Daryl Jackson. Nothing on the 20. It's a 6-7 against a right-hander. 6-7 is a pop-up to third. So he pops it up to Gaetti. Two away for Greg Nettles. So we got another lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup. Nothing on the 20. It's a 2-7 for Nettles against a lefty. And that's a walk. So that will extend the inning to Roy Smalley. Roy Smalley be facing Daryl Jackson with two on and two outs. Nothing on the 20. It's a 4-7 against a right-hander. And that's a 1-5 single. 6-20. to 20. We'll line it to short. That's an 8. So he's going to line it to short. Handled over there by Washington. And the Yankees get nothing in the ninth. Keeps the score one to nothing as Jackson does his job in relief. We go to the bottom of the ninth, and on comes the Goose. He is going to be motioned in, try to save it for Tommy John. And in the 82 season, Goose Gossage did have 30 saves. So why wouldn't you go to Goose Gossage? Try to wrap things up. And for the Twins, it'll be Washington, Bernanski, and Herbeck. And I'm not sure he can pinch hit for Washington because there's only anybody else to play in the infield. So they're probably in a bind right here for pinch hitters. So it's going to be Ron Washington or bust. Although he did hit 271 on the season, and he does have a good column too. So there is hope. Let's see what Washington can do. 5-9 against Gossage. And that is a potential double. He did find that one base hit there. 1 to 12 would be a double. 
Anything else, he's going to fly to right. That's a one, so it's a leadoff double for Ron Washington. Leadoff double. And maybe the Twins have something going here. Brunanski, the batter. He's not a bunter, so they're going to go ahead and... Uh, well, I wonder if they're going to replace Brunanski. You know what? They're going to pinch hit for Brunanski with Jim, uh, Jim Eisenreich. I'm going to bring a lefty in there. So Jim Eisenreich will pinch hit for Brunanski. And in the event it goes extra innings, he can stay in the game to play center field. Right now it is Mr. Eisenreich. Pinch hit. See what he can do against Gossage. It's a two, so we've got a chance for a either a balk or a pass ball. It's a five, so it's a pass ball chance on Weiniger. Again, it's only a one. And that's a two, so we just did avoid that. So here is Eisenreich, one nine. Ground ball, second base C. That's going to advance the runner. So he at least gets Washington over to third base. So he's at third base with only one out and Kent Herbeck, the batter. Infield's going to have to come in, try to choke that runoff. It's a 5 8. For Gossage against the lefty, and that's a strikeout, a big one. So Herbeck out on strikes for out number two. Brings up Dave Engel, but he's a specialist against left-handed pitching, not against right-handed pitching. So he will exit, and Randy Johnson will take over as the DH if it goes extra innings, and he's going to pinch hit right now for Engel. That's one thing when you have the left-handed starter, you can put your lefties on the bench, and when they bring in the right-handed reliever, you got to plethora of lefty batters. So this is it right here. Randy Johnson against Goose Gossage. Runner at third, two outs. Bottom of the ninth, 2-1 Yankees. It's a 4-4 four, four against a lefty. And that's a catcher X. Catcher is Weiniger. He's a 2-E-3. That's a 9 with a 5. So that could be interesting. 5 for rare plays. 9 and a 2 for Weiniger. A 9 and a 2. So he's a 2 rated and it's a 9. That's a P slash F. And that's a 5. So P slash F. Well, we go to the rare play. P slash F. Batter swings and misses the pitch, but he is awarded first base when the umpire calls catcher's interference. Base runners advanced only as forced. So it's going to be catcher interference on Butch Weiniger, and that's something you don't get in a lot of games, but you get it in super advanced strat. So he reaches on catcher's interference. That will be an error charge to Weiniger, but the runners cannot advance unless they're forced, so Washington is still at third. And now it's up to Mickey Hatcher, runners at the corners and two outs. It's a two, so we got another chance for either a balk or a pass ball. And again, only a one for a pass ball, and that's a 13, so there is no pass ball. So Hatcher, 2-2 two -two against a right-hander is a ground ball to short. That's going to end the inning and the ball game as the Yankees defeat the Twins by the score of 2-1. to one. Winning pitcher was Tommy John. The losing pitcher, although he pitched very well, was Terry Felton. And the save goes to the Goose, Goose Gossage. Be right back for the totals and a wrap-up. All right. Winning pitcher again was Tommy John. He went eight innings, gave up six hits and one run. Didn't walk anybody, struck out only one, but he had that ground ball working, uh, twirling three double plays. Goose Gossage gave up a hit in, a, uh, in the ninth, but got the save. For Terry Felton, eight innings, three hits, two runs. They were both earned, walked three, struck out four, gave up the home run to Nettles. And then Jackson, a, a iffy ninth, but got out of it one hit and one walk. So total line score, two runs, four hits, one error for the Yankees. One run, seven hits, no errors for the Twins. And with that, we are going to go to game five, start five. And I believe that is against, I want to say it's Seattle, but I did not check. So I'd have to go look at the game log and see who it is. But... Either way, I think I'm going to stick with Stratomatic and just stay with that for Terry Felton. Yeah, he came so close 
but uh, didn't get the run support. He certainly pitched well enough to win, but just couldn't quite pull it off. And then finally tired in the eighth, and uh, the rest is history. So it's going to do it from here. Hope everybody enjoys playing whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it. And as usual, I will see you all down the road.